my sister, my daughter. Have you ever wondered what happened when the biggest stars collided during Hollywood's golden age? Don't miss out on the scorching rivalries that ignited silver screens in the 10 most fiery rivalries from Hollywood's golden age you need to know now. Number 10. Lawrence Olivier versus Marilyn Monroe. In the world of Hollywood's golden age, one rivalry that caught the attention of many was the clash between Lawrence Olivier and Marilyn Monroe. Olivier, an esteemed actor, had initially played the lead role in the stage version of The Prince and the Showgirl, alongside his wife, Vivian Lee. Far too grown up. I guess that's just due to, uh, due to his upbringing. However, when the opportunity arose to bring the play to the big screen, Lee was deemed too old for the part, and Monroe was cast as the showgirl, much to Olivier's dismay. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might be wondering, what exactly went down between Olivier and Monroe? Trust me, I've been there too. From the very beginning, Olivier made his displeasure known. Inside, somewhere or other, she doesn't want to act. She wants to show herself. That's another thing. He would taunt Monroe and berate her for her perceived shortcomings on set. Whether it was her tardiness, forgetfulness of lines, or her constant need for her method acting coach by her side, Olivier never missed a chance to criticize her. But little did he know that Monroe had her own plans to get back at him. Upon discovering that Olivier was secretly taking bets on how many takes Monroe would require to perform a particularly challenging scene, she saw an opportunity to turn the tables. Determined to prove her talent and silence her critics, Monroe dedicated herself to studying the scene extensively. When the moment arrived to shoot the scene, she stunned everyone by flawlessly delivering a single perfect take. As Monroe exited the room, she closed the door behind her, leaving Olivier and the crew in awe. But just seconds later, she re-entered the room with a mischievous grin on her face and playfully uttered the now famous words, Pretty good, huh? It was a brilliantly executed move that not only showcased Monroe's talent, but also served as a subtle yet powerful reminder to Olivier that she was a force to be reckoned with. But wait, there's more. Get ready for an unexpected twist that will have you questioning everything you thought you knew. Number 9. Klaus Kinski vs. Werner Herzog In the realm of filmmaking, few collaborations have been as tumultuous as that between director Werner Herzog and actor Klaus Kinski. Das ist wahrscheinlich gar nicht das richtige Wort. Er war richtig in egomanisch. Die Erde, über die ich gehe, sieht mich und bebt mir nach. Despite their friendship that stretched back to childhood, their professional relationship was fraught with tension, making it one of the most volatile partnerships in cinematic history. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal with these two? Ich bin der Zorn Gottes. During the production of Aguirre, The Wrath of God, Kinski reached a breaking point and threatened to walk away from the movie. In a shocking turn of events, Herzog, in a desperate attempt to keep his star actor on board, resorted to pulling out a gun. This incident, however extreme, was just one episode in a series of outbursts that characterized their time together. In another instance on set, Kinski fired a rifle three times at a tent filled with crew members, tragically injuring one and costing them a finger. Their collaboration continued with the film Fitzcarraldo, but the volatile nature of their relationship persisted. Ich entfernte ihn darauf aus dieser Einstellung. Kinski tobte, ich sei größenwahnsinnig geworden. Ich sagte ihm darauf, dann sind wir jetzt eben zu zweit. In a bizarre turn of events, Herzog even went so far as to set fire to the house where Kinski was sleeping during filming. Such actions were indicative of the deep-seated animosity and intensity that permeated their work together. When it comes to Herzog, Kinski said, quote, He does many, many things right, but he's also sick. 
obsessed. He wants to make history, not movies. Anyone who wants to make history is stupid. In regards to Kinski, Herzog said, Klaus was one of the greatest film actors of the century, but he was also a monster and a great pestilence. We were together like two critical masses Together, we were like two critical masses which created a dangerous mixture whenever they came into contact with each other. Tragically, Kinski passed away alone in 1991, leaving behind a complicated legacy. Herzog, on the other hand, continues to create films, showcasing his resilience and determination to forge ahead despite the turbulent history of their collaboration. Before we move forward, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Number 8. Elizabeth Taylor vs. Debbie Reynolds In the glitzy world of Hollywood, friendships can sometimes be as dramatic as the movies themselves. Take the case of Debbie Reynolds and Elizabeth Taylor, two teen actors who first crossed paths at MGM and went on to develop a close bond. In fact, their friendship was so strong that when Taylor tied the knot with Mike Todd, Reynolds proudly stood by her side as the matron of honor. So what's the point? Well, these two Hollywood icons had a roller coaster relationship that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Life took an unexpected turn when tragedy struck and Todd passed away. It was during this trying time that Reynolds' own husband, Eddie Fisher, approached Taylor to provide solace. Yes, you guessed it, they started an affair. Fisher's actions left Reynolds heartbroken and alone, left to care for their two children, including the iconic Carrie Fisher, who reportedly later said that Fisher went to console Taylor, quote, with his penis, end quote. As fate would have it, Taylor's own love life took a twist when she fell head over heels for the dashing Richard Burton prompting her to leave Fisher in the dust. I don't blame her for the break. I blame Eddie for the break. This turn of events not only caused a rift between Taylor and Fisher, but also strained the once strong friendship between Taylor and Reynolds. I left the Debbie long before there was any magic between Elizabeth and myself. For seven long years, their relationship was marred by silence and unresolved tension. At the time, Mike Todd. Mike Todd tragically, tragically passed died. away yeah. in a plane accident, and my father consoled Elizabeth with his penis. <laughs> However, as the saying goes, time has a way of healing wounds. It was during a chance encounter on a cruise ship that Reynolds and Taylor found themselves in the same place at the same time. Perhaps fueled by nostalgia and a shared history, they decided to have dinner together and finally put their differences aside. Number 7. Orson Welles vs. William Randolph Hearst Feuds in Hollywood can erupt over the smallest spark, and Orson Welles certainly found himself at the center of a fiery controversy when he decided to create his very first feature film, The Iconic Citizen Kane. You've probably heard of it. The trouble began when Wells chose to delve into the life and scandals of none other than William Randolph Hearst, a powerful newspaper magnate who didn't take too kindly to being exposed for his extramarital affairs and tried to destroy people with his power. And he'd known my father. I'd never met him, you know. And I introduced myself. Things you'll do when you're young, you know. <laughs> Can I be completely honest with you? This feud had such far-reaching consequences that it still reverberates in Hollywood to this day. Would you like to come to the opening tonight? And he didn't answer, and I said, well, Mr. Kane would have come. From the moment Wells announced his ambitious project, Hearst made it clear that he would not tolerate any coverage of Citizen Kane in his newspapers. <laughs> He wanted to silence the film and erase any trace of his personal life being portrayed on the big screen. In fact, Hearst went so far as attempting to purchase the original print of the movie with the intention of destroying it, but his plan ultimately failed. Unfortunately, Hearst's campaign against Citizen Kane had a significant impact on its initial release. 
The mogul's efforts to defame Wells and undermine the film's success had a chilling effect, leading to a less than stellar reception upon its premiere. The hostility was so palpable that even at the 1942 Academy Awards, when anything related to Citizen Kane was mentioned, boos rippled through the audience. Number 6. Borlis Karloff vs. Bela Lugosi Feuds can take on many forms, and the one between Borlis Karloff and Bela Lugosi is quite intriguing. Where is my wife? Albeit somewhat one-sided, these two legendary figures of old-timey monster movies rose to stardom through their portrayals of iconic characters in universal horror films during the 1930s. Karloff found fame when he clawed the bolts and scars to become Frankenstein's monster in the aptly titled film Frankenstein, while Lugosi captivated audiences as the suave Count Dracula in, well, Dracula. Imagine that. Interestingly enough, Lugosi was initially offered the role of Frankenstein's monster, but turned it down because he wasn't keen on the heavy makeup requirements. Little did he know that Karloff would transform the character into a truly emotional and captivating experience for viewers. Rather than letting the role define him, Karloff used it as a springboard to launch a successful career. He fearlessly tackled the range of roles, portraying mad scientists, detectives, and even aging horror actors. The man was a true workhorse, always honing his craft. On the other hand, Lugosi's career took a different path, albeit a somewhat sadder one. He held a grudge against Karloff, considering him a lesser actor and blaming him for being typecast in horror films, which limited his opportunities outside of the genre. The irony, however, lies in the fact that Karloff didn't pay much attention to Lugosi's resentment. In a twist of fate, Lugosi even ended up playing Frankenstein's monster himself in later, lesser-known Universal sequels. But wait, there's more. Stick around, because we've got something truly epic coming up next. Number 5. Olivia de Havilland vs. Joan Fontaine Hollywood has seen its fair share of rivalries, but few can match the intensity of the sibling feud between Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine. According to Joan, the animosity began right from the start, with the young Olivia feeling less than thrilled about having to share their parents' attention. As they grew up, their relationship only grew more tumultuous, marked by bullying, berating, and even physical altercations. This feud is so intense, it'll make you question everything you thought you knew about sisterly love. Olivia initially seemed to have the upper hand in their rivalry by launching a successful acting career. With standout performances in the Hollywood adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream, <laughs> and a series of films alongside Errol Flynn, Olivia made a name for herself. However, Joan, after briefly working as Olivia's chauffeur, followed suit and secured her own contract at a rival studio. Despite her achievements, Joan had to relinquish the family name as Olivia's newfound fame made it clear that Tinseltown couldn't accommodate two de Havilland sisters. Both sisters experienced meteoric success on the silver screen dated the same men, and even competed for the iconic role of Melanie in Gone with the Wind, with Olivia ultimately winning the coveted part. The rivalry reached a peak when they were both nominated in the same category at the 1940 Academy Awards, and Joan emerged as the victor. Olivia would go on to win her own Oscar a few years later, but she famously snubbed Joan when she tried to offer her congratulations. The fracture in their relationship never truly healed, and Joan's passing in 2013 sealed the fate for any hope of a genuine reconciliation. Get ready, we're about to dive into the epic clash between two iconic legends. 
Number 4. Faye Dunaway vs. Roman Polanski The set of Chinatown witnessed a clash for the ages between actress Faye Dunaway and director Roman Polanski. Their tumultuous relationship was marked by tense moments and explosive encounters. One incident that showcased their animosity was when Polanski plucked a stray hair from Dunaway's head, considering it a hindrance to the shot he was capturing. This action may have seemed trivial, but it underscored the simmering tension between them. Another episode occurred when Dunaway approached Polanski seeking clarity on her character's motivation in a scene. To her surprise, Polanski curtly replied that her motivation was her paycheck. It was a cutting remark that reflected the strained dynamics between the two. She's my daughter. I said I want the truth. She's my sister. So what's the point? Stay tuned, because I'll explain it in a minute. The most infamous incident took place during the filming of a car scene when Dunaway urgently needed a bathroom break. When she requested a pause, Polanski flatly refused, further escalating the tension. Frustrated and irked by his response, Dunaway resorted to an extreme measure. She reportedly urinated into a cup and threw the liquid at Polanski in an act of defiance and disgust. Although Dunaway later denied the incident, it became a notorious anecdote associated with their tumultuous working relationship. But wait, there's a shocking revelation just around the corner. Get ready to have your mind blown. Number 3. Joan Crawford vs. Betty Davis When it comes to celebrity feuds, few rival the epic battle between Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. These two legendary actresses who made their mark in the early days of film were no strangers to the ups and downs of showbiz. Despite facing their fair share of challenges, they not only maintained their fame, but also achieved iconic status that eluded many of their contemporaries. Want to know the best part? These leading ladies didn't just clash on screen, but their off-screen drama was just as intense. The feud between Crawford and Davis ignited in 1933, when Davis's first starring role in Ex Lady was overshadowed by Crawford's high-profile divorce from Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Both events made headlines on the same day, but it was Crawford's personal drama that stole the spotlight, leaving Davis's film to flop. This pattern continued when Davis fell head over heels for her co-star French show Tone during the filming of another movie. However, Crawford swooped in and snatched him away from under Davis's nose, adding insult to injury. Crawford later remarked that Tone thought highly of Davis as an actress, but never saw her as a woman. Ouch. For the next three decades, Crawford and Davis engaged in a venomous rivalry, trading jabs in the press, vying for coveted roles, and generally being downright nasty to each other. However, fate had a surprising twist in store for them when they finally shared the screen in their only collaboration. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? In this film, the aging actresses portrayed sisters trapped in a dilapidated mansion, a true spectacle to behold. But you are Blanche, you are in that chair. While Davis eagerly embraced the opportunity to go all out as the grotesque Jane, she faced a constant battle with Crawford, who insisted on looking glamorous despite playing a character confined to a wheelchair. Oh, really? Did she like it? Oh, really? Did she like it? Davis later recalled her frustration, noting that Crawford wanted her hair perfectly styled, her gowns beautiful, and her fingernails painted red. But for a character who had been secluded in a room for two decades, looking attractive was simply inappropriate. In response, Crawford fired back, claiming that Davis had always resorted to covering up her face in films, disguising her lack of real beauty as art or camouflage. To add an extra layer of madness to their feud, Davis received an Academy Award nomination for her role, while Crawford managed to cunningly find her way onto the stage to accept the award on behalf of Anne Bancroft, who couldn't attend the ceremony. It was pure shade at its finest. Are you still with us? 
good, because what's coming up is absolutely mind-blowing. Number 2. Sophia Loren vs. Jane Mansfield In the glamorous world of Hollywood, clashes between actresses were bound to happen. But the feud between Sophia Loren and Jane Mansfield was fueled by a particularly memorable encounter. It all unfolded at a star-studded party in Beverly Hills, where Mansfield made an attention-grabbing entrance on behalf of Loren. She flaunted a jaw-dropping, low-cut dress that defied gravity and happened to skip the bra. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single moment of this amazing story. No one can say exactly how long Mansfield lingered at the party, but it was long enough for her to cozy up to Loren and pose for a few photographs. In those pictures, you can see Loren shooting daggers with her eyes, delivering some of the most lethal side-eye we've ever witnessed. Loren later recounted the incident, shedding light on her internal turmoil. She said, quote, Mansfield came right for my table. She knew everyone was watching. She sat down, and now she was barely... Listen, look at the picture. Where are my eyes? I'm staring at her chest because I am afraid they are about to come onto my plate. In my face, you can see the fear. I am so frightened that everything in her dress is going to blow, boom, and spill all over the table. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. Get ready for the grand finale that will leave you breathless. Number 1. Frank Sinatra vs. Marlon Brando Being a celebrity in the presence of Frank Sinatra and his Rat Pack was no walk in the park, as Marlon Brando discovered firsthand. The tension between the two legendary actors reached its peak during the filming of Guys and Dolls in 1955. My daddy always said there's only one time a man should be in a hurry, when the cops are coming up the stairs. How about a cup of coffee? It all started with a petty squabble over the role of Sky Masterson, with Sinatra vying for it while Brando ultimately secured the part. Sinatra, known for his quick wit, couldn't resist poking fun at Brando's unique way of speaking, and dubbed him Mumbles. Naturally, Brando didn't take kindly to this mocking and decided to retaliate in a manner both amusing and childish. In a particular scene where Sinatra had to eat a piece of cake, Brando repeatedly pretended to forget his lines, deliberately disrupting the smooth flow of the production. The cake incident marked the turning point in their relationship. From that moment on, Sinatra and Brando ceased all direct communication and relied solely on intermediaries within the cast and crew. However, matters escalated even further when rumors surfaced about Sinatra's wife at the time, the captivating Ava Gardner, spending time with Brando. Allegedly, this love triangle led to a shocking incident orchestrated by some of Sinatra's buddies. It is said that one night, three menacing individuals abducted Brando at gunpoint and forced him into a car. They proceeded to drive him around the treacherous hills of Hollywood, threatening him with unspeakable harm. A friend of Brando's later revealed the harrowing details, recounting Marlon's words of fear and desperation. According to the friend, Brando recounted, quote, One of the goons told me that he was going to offer me a choice. He could kill me a quick and easy death with a bullet in the heart, or else he'd let me live. If he let me live, he'd castrate me and carve up my face so that no plastic surgeon could ever repair it. I was sweating blood. The alleged kidnapping incident serves as a chilling testament to the extreme lengths some people would go to defend their pride and protect their relationships in the chaotic realm of Hollywood. Thanks for joining us on this amazing journey through the fiery rivalries of Hollywood's golden age. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content. Until next time, stay tuned for more Hollywood Secrets Revealed.